The member for Memorcook Tantrum. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to speak at second reading to Bill 25, an act respecting residential tenancies. And I wish that this act respecting residential tenancies was going to extend the, the rent cap, ensure there was a rent cap for <clears throat> 2023, because the rent cap has protected tenants this year. It was necessary. The government resisted it for a while and then realized that they had to. It was a tool that had to be used. And unfortunately, it's about to expire, Mr. Speaker. And tenants across the province are worried. They are terrified of what's going to happen if their rent goes up too much. They are worried about not having the ability to pay. There are not enough protections. And there is an imbalance of power in the relationship between landlord and the tenant. Because <clears throat> the landlord, what's at risk for them is different than what's at risk for a tenant. The tenant risks losing their housing, Mr. Speaker. There is a power imbalance. And yes, they're being told to go to the Residential Tenancies Tribunal, and many of them do. And I, I recommend people go there regularly. I contact the Residential Tenancies Tribunal myself and, and let them know about what's, what's happening in my riding and in other places. I hear from people across the province who are getting notice of rent increases that at this point are legal of significant amounts. And Mr. Speaker, it's almost as if the minister responsible for housing wanted to have a rent cap. Like there was a move towards it, but that she wasn't allowed to have one. They're talking about spreading the, the rent increase over uh, several years. But Mr. Speaker, what does that look like if you have a 75% increase in rent, so 25% a year? Like, Mr. Speaker, this is not acceptable. And <clears throat> one of the issues is that there's this, they, they call it, I guess, in the industry, like turns. When someone leaves a unit and a new person comes in, the rent can get raised mm -hmm. however much the, the landlord wants, and that can, that's creating um, upward pressure on the price of rentals. And so even to compare in a geographical area, well, we know, we know, Mr. Speaker, that the prices have gone up across the board, that that is not enough protection. This legislation does not go far enough. It is not good enough. It will not protect the most vulnerable, the people that need protection. And Mr. Speaker, we have to understand that many people are, as I said, there's a power imbalance. Many people can be intimidated by the process of, of navigating going to the Residential Tenancies Tribunal. They may have had bad experiences dealing with government agencies in the past. I see that on a regular basis. And they, they may be intimidated. There may be literacy issues. There may be other issues. And so to put the onus on the tenants to say, you need to keep fighting, you need to keep fighting to have somewhere affordable to live constantly, rather than putting it on the landlords to have to justify increases, to have to justify rent evictions, to, or to renovations, to have to justify that the tenant should even have to move out for a renovation, to justify increasing the rent to make, because it's becoming unaffordable for so many people. This is serious, Mr. Speaker. And the market conditions that the government finally decided warranted having a rent cap have not gotten better for tenants, Mr. Speaker. I would argue things are worse because the cost of food has kept rising, the cost of put people putting fuel in, whether it's their oil tank or their gas tank, that has gone up. It is more difficult for people to get by. And they are going along, many people without a livable wage, many people without paid sick days, even though we're still in a pandemic. I don't know how people are doing it, Mr. Speaker, where their kids are, are out sick and they need to stay home and miss work. And they're wondering, how am I going to pay for my rent? 
and they're getting notice that they're going to have a significant rent increase, and they don't know what they're going to do. Mr. Speaker, that is the situation for people, many people in New Brunswick. And it is clear from the actions of this government that they could not care less, that they are not willing to do what it takes to help the people of New Brunswick. What are they going to do? Well, they're certainly not going to provide a rent cap to prevent people from losing their housing. They're not going to ensure that, that people can afford food and gas. They're not going to take the millions and millions, the hundreds of millions <laughs> in surplus and put it where it needs to go, Mr. Speaker. And so here we have inadequate legislation that is being debated <laughs> with a time limit. Because Mr. Speaker, there is a motion that the government has tabled to limit the debate on several bills, including this one. And it is unacceptable. This this is, it's indefensible. This is ridiculous. And, and they might say, oh, well, the Liberals did it. Well, that doesn't make it right, Mr. Speaker, to be limiting debate on important legislation. Why rush these things through? And I could get into the need for proportional representation as well, Mr. Speaker, because they're able to do that because they have 100 percent of the power, nowhere near 100 percent of the votes, Mr. Speaker. But here we are with debate being limited. And so we see the debate is being stifled. What does this mean for our democracy? That members of this House who have, should have every right to stand up for the tenants of this province, for the people who need protection, but they're self-censoring, they're limiting, they're looking at the clock like I am now, saying, well, gosh, if I keep talking now, maybe I won't be able to ask the minister questions and try to get some answers to defend the legislation that they're trying to push through. And I asked questions in committee previously, and we don't always even get the answers, and we should be able to call witnesses, Mr. Speaker, and I'll bring that up again, because we can't always get the answers from the ministers, Mr. Speaker. We need to hear from experts as well. So, Mr. Speaker, it is a sad day for democracy in this legislature in this province, because this is an unacceptable way to run things, to push things through and to limit debate. And so, as I've said, I guess I should save some time for committee so we can try to get some answers, try to get some justification for some of these bills that they're trying to push through. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.